On Monday, April 8th, North America will experience a total eclipse of the heart. Oh, no, wait, that's Bonnie Tyler. Total eclipse of the sun. This is a phenomenon in which the moon passes directly in front of the sun, blocking out its light and turning day for a few minutes into night. A solar eclipse should not be confused with a lunar eclipse, which is where the moon gets into the shadow of the Earth, making the moon look reddish or rusty brown. It's cool, but you can usually see one or two a year from almost anywhere. Solar eclipses are much more rare and much more spectacular. The reason for them is a cool cosmic coincidence. The moon is about 3,500 kilometers across and 384,000 kilometers from the Earth. The sun, 1.4 million kilometers across and about 150 million kilometers away. So what this means is that the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but also 400 times closer. So when they line up in the sky, not only does the moon perfectly cover the sun, it leaves just enough space at the edge to see the corona, the wispy edge of the sun's outer atmosphere, normally invisible in the glare from the sun itself. Now, if the moon were any bigger or closer, we'd lose the corona, any smaller or further away, and it wouldn't cover the whole sun. In fact, an annular eclipse is when the moon is too far out in its orbit to quite cover the sun, leaving a so-called ring of fire. It's cool, but it's not as cool as a total eclipse, when you'll feel the temperature drop, birds will fall silent, and people will sometimes just find themselves shouting in awe. Now on this scale, the moon would be about 9 meters from the Earth, or about 30 feet. And the sun would be 3.8 kilometers away, and a little bigger than a hot air balloon. Now, it's true that almost all of North America will see a partial eclipse, where the moon covers a portion of the sun, but the sun is so bright that even covering up most of it does very little to that brightness. Think of a cloudy day. The sun is completely covered by clouds, but you wouldn't think it was night. So even in Toronto or the northern part of Montreal, where you have 99% coverage, you won't get the whole show. The sun is about 400,000 times as bright as the moon. So if you cover up all but 1%, that's as much light as 4,000 full moons. So it'll get a little dim for a few minutes, but it won't get completely dark. Now that all changes inside of what's called the path of totality. That's where the moon completely covers the sun. The path is about 160 kilometers wide, and it moves across the Earth at more than 2,000 kilometers an hour, meaning on the ground you'll have three or four minutes of darkness. It makes landfall in Mexico, and then travels northeast through Texas, Arkansas, Indiana, Ohio, and then it crosses over Lake Erie and into Canada. There, it covers St. Catharines, Niagara Falls, and that area, just missing Toronto, passing over Lake Ontario, and then roughly following the 401 from Port Hope all the way to the Quebec border, where it will cover the southern part of Montreal. This all happens at a little after 3 p.m. local time. Now from there, the shadow continues eastward over Sherbrooke, Quebec, Fredericton and Miramichi, New Brunswick, and Summerside, PEI. St. John's, Newfoundland will narrowly miss the show, but it will fall on a little rock called Eclipse Island near Burjo, Newfoundland. It got its name from Captain James Cook, who was there during an eclipse on August 5, 1766, and used the event to calculate his exact position on the Earth. There are at least two solar eclipses every year, but because the path of totality is so narrow, they don't come to the same place very often, about once every 375 years on average for a given spot. So Toronto's last total eclipse was January 24th, 1925. It's next, October 26th, 2144. There's another one in 2099 that just misses the city, and the next one anywhere in Canada isn't even until 2044 in Western Alberta. Now, to view the eclipse, you'll need one of two things. Eclipse glasses, made with special lenses that are darker than any sunglasses. They carry a certification number, ISO 12312-2. And you need that because if you are outside the path of totality, even looking at a sliver of the sun directly can damage your eyes. Now, if you don't have the eclipse glasses or time to get them, you can make a pinhole camera, which is just two sheets of paper or cardboard with a pinhole in one of them. You line them up so the sun shines through the hole onto the second sheet and you get an image of the eclipse in progress. Now, the great thing about totality is that once the sun is completely covered by the moon, you can look at it with the naked eye because there's basically a giant rock blocking out all the harmful rays of the sun. The only caveat is that once totality ends in a few minutes, you've got to put your eclipse glasses back on or you'll damage your eyes. I haven't mentioned the biggest unknown for eclipses, weather. If it's a cloudy day, even in the path of totality, you're going to miss the show. And historically, Ontario, Southern Ontario, has about a 60% chance of overcast skies on that day, and it gets a little worse the further east you go. So the best you can do is hope for clear skies.